Hello everyone, this is the first video of the Optical Mineralogy series and today we are going to discuss about the nature of light. I hope you all have some basic ideas about the nature of light from your previous studies and today we are only going to discuss the basic principles of light that we will require to further study Optical Mineralogy. To define the nature of light, various theories have been proposed time to time. The, the oldest of them was a particle theory. It uh, gained popularity because uh, it was backed by Newton and uh, in this theory light is, uh, light is uh, theorized to be composed of subatomic particles called photons. So these photons are massless and chargeless elementary particles. Uh, like if we see this is an atom and if we excite the atom or heat it, uh, the electrons from the inner energy shell goes to the outer energy shell and when they come back they release some amount of finite energy. This energy is called photon. So when this photon hit our eyes we feel the sensitivity of seeing something. So this uh, particle theory is good for rectilinear motion of light, reflection and refraction. These phenomena can be described with the help of particle theory. But phenomena like interference, diffraction and polarization cannot be described with this theory. This particle theory is also known as corpuscular theory. So to describe these phenomena interference, diffraction and polarization, the theory that was proposed by Huygens was wave theory of light. So in this theory, uh, uh, light is considered to be a transverse wave. So uh, in this context I must tell you there are uh, two kinds of waves uh, like uh, transverse wave and longitudinal waves. So in transverse wave what happens is, is uh, the particles vibrate in a perpendicular direction to the direction of propagation. Like here if you see uh, the light is moving from left to right and the particles are vibrating up and down direction. So these are transverse waves. Uh, in longitudinal waves the uh, particles vibrate in the direction of propagation like in sound waves. Uh, we can uh, bring the analogy of seismic waves also like P waves and longitudinal waves, S waves are transverse waves. Now to transport some amount of energy in, terms in, in, form the, in the form of wave we must have a medium but as we know light can travel through space. So when, so when medium was conceptualized which, which is called ether which is a space, space filling medium and later it was discarded by the uh, further study. And uh, as light is a wave, light wave can also be uh, described uh, using these parameters like wavelength, frequency and amplitude. Uh, wavelength uh, as we all know the distance between the two points on the wave which are uh, in phase or which are equivalent points like this point and this point. The distance between these two points is wavelength. There is peak, there is crust, there is amplitude, amplitude is the uh, maximum distance from the median line to the peak and frequency like uh, with these parameters we can uh, characterize a light wave. This wave theory of light can describe interference, diffraction, and polarization beautifully. But instead of all these uh, effects like photoelectric effect, Crompton scattering and emission cannot be described with this theory. So another theory was proposed which is called the electromagnetic theory. This was proposed by Maxwell. And according to this theory, light is an electromagnetic wave. So what is an electromagnetic wave? An electromagnetic wave is composed of two vectors. One electric vector and another one is a magnetic vector. So the electric vector and magnetic vector vibrates in a perpendicular direction. Like here the uh, blue one is electric vector and this one, the other one is a magnetic vector. They both vibrate uh, in y plane and this vibrates in x plane and they both vibrate in a direction perpendicular to the direction of propagation so here the direction of propagation is the z direction now in electromagnetic wave there is a spectrum ranging from 10 to the power 3 meter to almost 10 to the power minus 5 nanometers and what we call light is only a small part of that spectrum and visible light is only a very very small part of that spectrum so if we consider light as an electromagnetic wave, it can be uh, classified into different regions from radio waves to gamma rays based on frequency and wavelength. Like radio, radio waves has, have the highest wavelength uh, greater than 0.3 meter and the gamma rays are the shortest wavelength. So 
so the infrared uh, here we can see the there is a range of wavelength uh, infrared for infrared it starts from 1 millimeter and goes up to 0.78 micrometer so as we as we have uh, seen that uh, light is uh, composed of two vectors electric vectors and magnetic vectors so we are mainly concerned with the electric vector because all the phenomenon that arises during the optical studies of minerals or any other thing Mm, that is due to the interaction between the electric vector of the light and the electronic environment within the crystal. So, from now on, whenever we say the vibration direction of light, we will uh, indicate the, elect uh, the vibration direction of the electric vector of the light. So, uh, after all this theory, the most uh, modern theory that was proposed is the quantum theory, and it is quite complex to understand. And this theory tells us that both particle and wave nature of light exists and we can use both the theories to describe different phenomena of light. So uh, as we have uh, see, as we have seen that light has frequency, light moves at finite velocity and it has a wavelength. But uh, we have to keep in mind that frequency of light is constant. It doesn't depend on the medium it is traveling through. So in this case uh, the light wave is uh, coming from an outer medium and going into this medium. So as we see, the uh, the wavelength is changing. The reason is that that if if the light uh, falls into uh, light enters a denser medium, its velocity decreases. And to make the frequency constant, the wavelength must change. So uh, moving on, let me introduce to the some of the terminologies related to the wave nature of light. Uh, that are wave front, wave normal and light ray. So what is a wave front? Wave front are parallel surfaces adjoining similar or equivalent points on the adjacent waves. So here we can see a uh, light is not a single wave. It is, uh, a, it is composed of several waves coming out of the surface, uh, coming out of the source. So here we can see these are the, some of the light waves and if we join the equivalent or similar points on the adjacent waves like these points, we get a plane. So this plane is called wave front. What is wave normal? Wave normal is a line perpendicular to the wave front. So if these are wave front, like it is uh, represented here as these lines, the, the perpendicular to this plane is the wave normal. And the light ray represents the direction of propagation of light energy. So the light energy propagates in this direction. This is the light ray. Now this, uh, if we uh, take isotropic medium, the light ray and wave normal are parallel or they are the same thing but in an isotropic medium the light ray and wave normal are not parallel they are at an angle so we will discuss about isotropic and anisotropic medium later now moving on to the next slide uh, there is a phenomenon of light called interference so interference takes place when two waves superimpose and they form a resultant wave which have a different amplitude than the uh, waves that are superimposing like in this case, uh, this wave and this wave superimposed to form a resultant wave with higher amplitude. Okay, so there are some of the prerequisites that must be fulfilled to uh, form an interference between two waves. The waves must be coherent. That means that they must be generated from a single source or they have very similar frequency and they must have it in the same plane and travel along the same path. So uh, there are two types of um, uh, interference. And this is uh, can this can be described by the uh, parameters called retardation. So what is retardation? Retardation is the distance that one wave lags behind the other. Like in this case, these are the two waves. So the distance one wave is lagging behind the other is called the retardation. And this retardation can be expressed in terms of nanometers or number of wavelengths. So the retardation delta is equal to i lambda. If i is an integer, two waves are said to be in phase and if it is one and half two and half or three and half they are called out of phase when when the waves are in phase and they superimpose they form constructive interference like the amplitude is the sum of the two and the resultant wave has a higher amplitude than the both well, than the both waves and when they are out of phase they cancel out each other like like in this case the waves are out of phase and when they produce interference the resultant wave, the resultant wave will have zero amplitude. 